In experiment H2, we're measuring the specific heat of a material, which is an important physical property, and it gives you a notion of how much heat energy has to be put into something to raise its temperature by a certain amount. We're going to be working with aluminum uh, for this experiment. Now, the first thing we need to do, of course, is heat the aluminum up to a high known temperature. So let me get the boiler started here. You have a Fisher burner and an igniter. Turn it on, make sure it's hooked up to the gas. In an unfamiliar chemistry lab, I once hooked one up to a water faucet, and it was quite embarrassing. So be sure it's, uh, it says gas on the uh, device. Turn it on, and there we go. Slide it under the boiler. Now, there are several masses that we need to know. Here is the boiler container. So the first thing I'm going to do is mass it. All right, here's the empty sample container. And that looks like, in this case, 104.0 grams. All right, now fill it almost level full with the aluminum pellets. Now, let's see. going to be a little over 230 grams. Oh, it's going to be close enough to 235.9. The difference will be the mass of the pellets. I'll place the sample holder into the boiler. And once we see steam coming out of the boiler, we need to boil for about 15 minutes to assure that the temperature of the pellets is up to the temperature of the boiling water. While we're waiting for that to happen, I'm going to take the calorimeter here, I'll very carefully lay the thermometer down, take the lid off, and the part of the calorimeter that I need to mass is the aluminum cup and the stirring rod. So let me mass those. And it's just a bit over 50 grams for this one. Let's call it 56.3. Now I'm going to fill it about a third full of water because the water will absorb the heat from the heated pellets and keep it inside the calorimeter and when we measure that, e that equilibrium temperature uh, we'll be able to calculate the specific heat of the pellets. I have now added about this much water to the calorimeter and massed it again so that I know the mass of the water and the mass of the calorimeter separately. Uh, the reason I have to do that is because the specific heat of the water is not the same as the specific heat of the calorimeter. And I need to know what's called the thermal inertia of this system, which is mass times specific heat. And so there's a combination of the mass of the calorimeter times its specific heat, which is 0.22 
in units of calories per gram per Kelvin and the water which has a very large specific heat of one calorie per gram per Kelvin. So I'll put this back down in here, put the lid on it, put in the thermometer and let that come to equilibrium while we're waiting on the boiler to reach boiling temperature. Okay, in order to know the temperature of the boiling water, we need to know the barometric pressure because at lower barometric pressure, water boils at lower temperature, and we need to know that value. So, this is a mercury barometer. There is a small pointer that sticks down from the top, and this will adjust the level of the mercury in the reservoir so that the top of it is just even with the point of that calibration pointer because that's the zero for the meter scale. So I'll bring this up until the top of the mercury just touches the top of that little pointer. Now we look up here and we move this slider down to where it's even with the top of the mercury column and it looks like 73.6, it has a vernier, 73.66. That's 736.6 millimeters of mercury. Okay, in the handbook of chemistry and physics, we can look up the boiling point of water as a function of barometric pressure and 736.6 tells me that the temperature of boiling water is 99.127 at that barometric pressure. All right, this has been boiling for 15 minutes and so I want to get those heated pellets into the calorimeter and bear in mind this handle will be hot. So fold up a paper towel or a handkerchief or something else to protect your fingers. You'll want another paper towel because there will be some condensation on that. We don't want any of that heated water getting into the calorimeter because it'll skew the results considerably. Okay, here we go. I'm going to lift this out. I'm going to blot the water from it. I'm going to lift this open. I better take that off first. Don't want that in there. Lift this open. Pour in the pellets. Close it. Now, check your watch or your phone and wait about two minutes until we get equilibrium temperature in here. You can stir a little bit, that'll help. And then after about two minutes, you need to measure the temperature to the nearest tenth of a degree every minute for 10 minutes. And then we'll extrapolate that back to time zero so we can find what the equilibrium temperature would have been had it come to equilibrium instantly. And with that information, you can solve the equation for the specific heat of the pellets.